I want to share with you some words by a bishop from his Easter sermon that I thought were, were so, so true and so powerful. He preached that the light of Easter penetrates any darkness. Some of you maybe are in darkness. You know the power of sin, which stops us flourishing, makes it as if death is final. The light of Easter has broken the power of darkness. And the devil, whom the fathers of the church called, he who hates the good, is now vanquished. Our enemy is vanquished. And we live, more than we know perhaps, with a formidable capacity, a supernatural capacity for life and growth and flourishing. We can recover, we can heal, even when we're wounded. And so we have hope. None of us are hopeless cases. Not even me, not even you. St. Paul says, if you've been raised with Christ, strive for the things that are above where Christ is. See the world in the light of Easter. When you, when you experience sin, when you experience death, that when you're bereaved, when there, you experience all the things that make us afraid in our wounded world, remember Easter. That's what it is to be a Christian. But sin, as the epistle to the Hebrews says, clings so closely and joy eludes us. Easter joy fades like one of those mornings where the sun is out when you wake up but the sky clouds over and soon it's raining. Joy eludes us. We lose courage. Into this darkness, the darkness of this world, we are to let Christ shine. He is our life. We simply need to let him live in us together as his disciples, as his community, as his church, as his body in this place on top of a hill in Enfield in North London in 2024. How do we do that? We all have our crosses to bear. You know what your cross is. But the cross, however heavy, is illumined by glory if we carry it in Christ. Maybe you begin to experience already what that word, these words mean. He who allows the cross bears it in us. We can carry it in Christ. And we can see whatever we suffer in relation to the resurrection. One of my Greek great predecessors was a, a New Testament scholar in one of the jobs I've done. And he's buried in Grantchester outside Cambridge. And on his grave, just two words with his name and dates. Crucifixion, resurrection. He used to teach that crucifixion and resurrection always, always go together. So if you experience crucifixion, you can hope for resurrection. We learn to perceive what we suffer in an optic of resurrection, you could say. The gospel speaks of the grain of wheat that falls into the earth. Maybe this is an image of, of what our lives, the meaning of our lives. We are a grain of wheat that's fallen into the earth. We're caught up in a process of growth to bear fruit. You know, another parable talks about the fruit tree that doesn't bear fruit. The owner wants to cut it down. The gardener says, give it another year. I'll dung it, put some manure on it. See if it bears fruit next year. We are caught up in a process of growth to bear fruit. And the final fruit will only be gathered on the other side of death. You know, I was preparing a couple for marriage and one of them said, yeah, it's like an egg and spoon race, marriage. You have to get there together to the finishing line. Bear fruit together, be saved together. And that fruit will only be gathered in on the other side of death. And for the time being in this earthly life, in bearing fruit, in that mission, manure of all sorts is helpful, whatever manure you're dealing with. Now perhaps we as Christians who bear our crosses more easily identify with Jesus' passion than with his resurrection. And maybe we should, we should do something about that. We should recollect, examine ourselves, 
because life is what is definitive. We suffer because we're denied life. Life is what we're made for. You don't pretend that Easter changes everything and you know, immediately we have a different experience of life. We don't go around pretending with fake smiles. People know fake smiles. You know, we're not air stewardesses. <clears throat> but we do live in a redeemed world. No death is final. Our destination is not death. Our goal is not death, but resurrection. When we're parted by death, those whom we love but see no longer have gone on towards the goal, leaving us behind in this life as they move towards the goal. No death is final, for Christ is risen. May he become fully alive in each one of us, together as his body, his risen body, in this church, on this hill, in North London, in 2024. That the world around us, the secular world, the joyless world, may believe and rediscover the joy it has lost. Amen.